What's up guys, it's messed up sweet right now. I'm checking out an ape honcho video man so If you haven't checked it out go check out his channel and uh, Go subscribe and like the video man And yeah, like this video Subscribe and leave a comment man. This one's about a m Apparently a man murdered a detective at a police station. This just sounds crazy man. So I want to see what's what's happening, man. September 25th, 2020, and officers from the Metropolitan Police... Okay, 2020. It's 1.30am on September 25th, 2020, and officers from the Metropolitan Police Service are patrolling on London Road in Norbury, South London. Out of nowhere, they spot a male holding a duffel bag while wearing a black surgical mask, coat, trousers and boots. Although this wouldn't have usually aroused suspicion at that moment in time, remember most of the public were wearing masks. On this occasion, it did, as there had been burglaries in the area. The police thought this man, whoever he was, may be connected to the ongoing burglaries in the area. And so, it was time to investigate. I want to detain you under Section 1 of the Police Criminal Evidence Act, OK? The reason for that is there's a lot of burglaries in this area, and I've just seen you walk... You can just keep your hands out your pockets for now. I'll take I'll take it and have a look in a minute. All right. The reason is there's a lot of burglaries in this area. Okay. Yeah. It's half one in the morning. I don't know who you are. You probably got a totally legitimate excuse. All right. But at the moment you're walking down the road with a duffel bag. All right. Which I which I believe may have stuff going to equip to do a burglary. All right. That seems kind of light though. Like, but yeah, I guess if there's been a lot of burglar burglaries. They've just seen a guy walking with a duffel bag. That seems like a kind of light, man. So I'm just going to search you. This pocket. I've got my ID. Perfect. OK, that's fine. Don't don't put your hands in your pockets. Hey. Why does he <laughs> why does he keep doing it? man? Hello. Don't put your hands in your pockets. OK, you OK? You're just going to be searched, mate. You're not under arrest. I just need to search you. You OK? All right, Can just a bit nervous, yeah? Parents, okay, are they expecting you home? Okay, that's fine. All right, that's fine. Give me two seconds, give me two seconds. Do you want me to hold that? Sorry, are you not in trouble? He looks nervous as hell, man. Are you not in trouble? Uh, so my, my colleagues just explained. Uh, he was just quickly search you, see if you've got anything, and then you're going to be gone. This has all been recorded on money. Okay? You're not in trouble. My colleagues just said a few of the grounds. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm going to confess, okay, yep. in that bag um, is uh, non-medical uh, that's a then 23 year old Louis de Zoya. It's not entirely clear what he was doing on the night in question, but to nip it in the bud, he was no burglar. There is one leading theory that has been pushed, and that was he was heading to his parents' home. Not for any regular visit though, as you'll find out shortly. Louis had been addicted to cannabis for roughly four years by this point, spending roughly £200 a month on it, which was more than £200 a month on cannabis. That's not a lot, man. But... Yeah, I don't know, man. That's not a lot, man. More than likely why he had it in his possession. He was also diagnosed with autism earlier on in life, which at first glance may explain why he was so nervous. Yeah, it does. When interacting with police, he was visibly shaking. According to medical reports, Louis' autism impacted the way he communicated and interacted with members of the public. But even if autism played a slight role in this nervous exchange with officers, it most definitely wasn't the cause of the initial stress. The stress wasn't caused by the fact he was in possession of cannabis either. Okay, okay. how much have you got in there? I've got maybe three or so uh, grams. Okay. All right, okay. I'm still going to have to search you, all right? Yeah. So just pass me your phone and your mask, okay? All my concern is at the moment is if you've got anything on that's going to hurt me or you. Any needles, any razor blades, anything like that. Okay, fine. 
because you just told me you've got drugs on you, I'm just going to have to put you in handcuffs while I search you. The reason... What's the matter? So the reason for that is people try and do silly things when we search them. They try and hurt themselves, they try and hurt police officers. Okay. All right. Can you take me into the car, please? Why? Don't resist. Listen to me very carefully. I know, I know. Don't resist. Okay, we'll put you in the car, but put the yeah. in first, yeah? Okay. Is it someone's I'm, watching us? Or? Yeah, can you take, take the bag, please? Thank you. Why do you want us to sit you in the car? Just worried, please. Yeah, that's weird, man. Why? Why are you worried? Just, just... You think your parents might see? No, no. Um... Right, get in the car, mate. Control, can I create a CAD for a, uh, a stop of a person on London Road, junction with Pollard Hill North, please? Don't put your hands in your pockets. Don't do that again. Do you understand? Do you understand? That's the third time you've done that, and I've told you not to. Next time, listen to me. Why didn't they empty his pockets before they put him in the car, though? Because how are they going to, like, search him while he's in the car? And... That's the third time you've done that, and I've told you not to. Next time, listen to me, next time you're going to be handcuffed to the back. All right? Three times I've asked you. You speak perfectly good English. Stop doing it. Received. You'll see my ID, which has my address. At the moment, I've tried to do you a favour by taking okay. off the street. You've not told me why. I'm just saving you a little bit of embarrassment. Now okay, you've reached I, into... I, I, Stop just... talking. Okay. You've now reached into your pockets three times and I've told you not to, right? You've now told me you've got drugs on you when I thought you might have had some sort of tool on you to burgle someone's house. Okay. So now I'm going to search you stood right here, all right? Because I don't know what else you've got on you. And I think there's more to this story than you're letting on, despite having drugs on you, all right? But yeah, this is mad, though. Like, how's this gonna lead to him killing someone at the police station? I guess we'll see, but yeah, it seems mad. Okay, so I asked you earlier, I'm not, I'm not too sure what the answer was. Have you got anything on you, like, sharp that can hurt me or you? No. No? Can you be as near as I can see what it is? It's not real. I believe we might do some paperwork. Stop, stop. How many canisters? Yeah, canisters. Oh. Oh. Right, at the moment, I'm placing you under arrest. Okay. For possession of what I believe to be... Yeah, that looks like bullets, man. Yeah, canisters. Oh, oh. Damn. Oh. Right, at the moment, right. I'm placing you under arrest okay. for possession of what I believe to be bullets. All right. Could I have van and cell space for one man adult arrested for possession of what I believe to be bullets on London Road, junction with Pollard Hill North? Good evening, officer. 1567. Search the back of him. Hey, Ryan, you've got a cell spell back with me, look. Just say receive for me. Yeah, receive. Yeah, receive. Just hold his jacket up for me. We're we'll changing to handcuffs to rear. Yeah, definitely. You got one pair of trousers on? I have a second pair of thermals. Right, okay. OK, 
Okay, I'm just going to search your inside leg. Spread your legs slightly for me, thank you. Where'd you get the boots from? Yeah, all good. Okay, so now they've put them in, in the van. So, yeah, what's going to happen next then? Huh? That looks like a horrible car ride, man. <laughs> Do you want me to stay with you? No, it's fine. Uh, possession of a firearm, aka a bag of uh, what looked like bullets. Uh, possession of yeah. intense supply class B. How is it possession of a firearm if you only got bullets, though? Firearm, aka a bag of uh, what looked like bullets. Uh, possession of intense supply class B. Intent to supply class B. I think class B is like heavier drugs, right? Yeah. Or maybe that's the light. Yeah, that's probably the cannabis. So you probably don't need further search. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just tip up this and wind them down, but don't take the cuffs off. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Stand up, Mike. He's been a bit. Go on. Um, um, I, I think this is, this is really good. I don't understand. Stand up. So talk to these no. leaves. Okay. What? Do you, do you, do you I think I'm missing. Yeah. Did you say please leave? What? Do you think I'm missing? Don't say. Okay, listen to me. My name's Matt, I'm the custody officer, right? I'm in charge. I'm not involved in the investigation. You've been arrested on suspicion of possession of bullets, uh, ammunition, and possession of intent to supply. Class yep. B. Class B, anything else? That's it. All right, your detention's not been authorised yet, but I can authorise a search of you under Section 54 of PACE. Stand up. Mate, you were good enough to... What's happened there, man? Being led into a cell at Croydon Custody Centre in South London, Louis managed to grab hold of a Colt antique revolver that he had stored in a holster under his coat and opened fire on Custody Sergeant. Wait, what? How bad was their search out there then? If he had a holster with a gun in it. And they didn't notice. That seems crazy man. Croydon Custody Centre in South London. Louis managed to <laughs> grab hold of a Colt antique revolver that he had stored in a holster under his coat and opened fire on Custody Sergeant Matt Rotner. Even though Louis had been thoroughly searched, police somehow managed to miss the near foot long gun that had been concealed. This yeah, that seems crazy, man. This would ultimately allow Louis to shoot Sergeant Rotner. Over the space of seconds, four shots were fired towards Sergeant Rotner. The first um. hit him directly in the chest, more specifically, the heart. After the first shot was fired, officers leapt on top of Louis, but he continued to fire. A second bullet would hit Sergeant Rotner in the leg. The third would lodge into the cell wall. And the final would bounce off the floor and hit Louis in the neck. A Sergeant Rotner lay bleeding to death. Um, so it hit himself in the neck. Final would bounce off the floor and hit Louis in the neck. A Sergeant Rotner lay bleeding to death. More officers ran in the cell and tasered Louis while screaming, You fucking piece of shit. He was then dragged out of the cell, leaving a trail of blood. Officers would try their best to keep both men alive until paramedics arrived. They were both bleeding out in Croydon Custody Center. When they did arrive, both men were still breathing. However, Sergeant Rotner would succumb to his injuries just two hours later in hospital. R.I.P. man. Louis almost met the same fate, but after life-saving surgery, he would go on to survive. Although it should be noted mm. that he had been in a coma for months after- Oh, damn. 
Months in a coma. Surgery, he would go on to survive, although it should be noted that he had been in a coma for months after the surgery. Although he survived, it wasn't entirely clear if he'd ever go on trial because of the condition he was in. The shooting had caused him to have a stroke, which left him with brain damage. He was able to communicate on a very basic level. He'd also been left partially paralyzed. However, the Crown Prosecution Service wanted to move forward with murder charges nine months after the shooting as Louis had somewhat recovered from his injuries. His lawyers argued that because he had brain damage, he wouldn't be fit to stand before a jury. But the judge presiding over the case would disagree and gave the go-ahead. You see, Louis was able to communicate at a very basic level using a whiteboard and short phrases. A lot of the time, it would just be one-worded answers. He was also able to somewhat understand questions that would come his way. And so when the judge took all of this into account, the thumbs up for the trial was given. I spoke to Matt two days before the shooting. The thing that pains me. Oh, damn. That's mud. I spoke to Matt two days before the shooting. The thing that pains me the most is that he was just two months away from retiring. A word spoken by Matt's brother, Ooh. James Young. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Matt Rotner was just two months away from retiring, but he was sadly murdered in cold blood. Matt's life had been one huge roller coaster. He was born in New Zealand to a loving family. As he was growing up, he wanted to follow his dreams of becoming a tennis player. As a part of chasing this dream, he would secure himself a scholarship in America, but ultimately decided he wanted to join the Metropolitan Police when he moved to England in 1991. He would be a police officer until 2020. Once you met Matt, you couldn't forget him. He would take time out to talk to people. He didn't care. It's always the good ones that dies, man. That's what it seems like most of the time, at least, man. That's crazy. Who you were. It's quite strange, but people who had been previously arrested would turn up to the station because they wanted to chat with Matt. Matt will be missed by many. The same can't be said for Louis. In June of 2023, Louis de Zoya would go on trial for the murder of Matt Rotner. As you know, it was never fully clear why Louis decided to go out that night armed with a gun. But the police and the Crown Prosecution Service did have one theory. He was going to either A, seriously hurt his father, or B, murder him. Again, this theory should be taken with a pinch of salt, because no charges in relation to Louis harming his father were ever placed against him. The reason why that theory was the strongest was because Louis and his father had a rocky relationship. You see, growing up, he would witness his father beat his mother. He would tell the jury using response techniques with his lawyer that he would be beaten by his father over trivial matters when he was a child. That's usually what causes this type of stuff. The police were fully aware there had been issues, as they had been called to at least one fight between the pair in the past. In 2019, they were called to the family home after a fight broke out. Louis had kicked his father off a bike because, quote, he had been talking too loud. During the trial... Wait, what? He kicked his dad off a bike? Because he was talking too loud. Father off a bike, but they were called to the family home after a fight broke out. Louis had kicked his father off a bike because, quote, he had been talking too loud. <laughs> During the trial, it emerged that Louis had purchased the antique firearm legally via an auction website. At that point in 2020, it was legal to do so. His lawyer stated that he had purchased the gun. How was that legal, though? I thought it was completely, but maybe it wasn't supposed to work or something like that. Man. In 2020, it was legal to do so. His lawyer stated that he had purchased the gun because he had feared the pandemic would lead to food shortages. Therefore, he would use the firearm to hunt wildlife. However, psychologists would tell the jury that Louis had told them he began carrying the gun months before the shooting for protection. He told the psychologists that he had been robbed in a drug deal gone wrong. Louis had lived at a flat in Banstead. That's roughly 10 miles from where he would be picked up by police. He had moved out from his parents' home after dropping out of an engineering course at college and finding employment with the HMRC. Using the experience he had in engineering, he crafted several working bullets for the firearm in his garage at the flat. 
Oh damn, so he made the bullets. And finding employment with the HMRC. Using the experience he had in engineering, he crafted several working bullets for the firearm in his garage at the flat. Those bullets would be used to murder Matt Ratner. During the defense's right. opening speech, Louis's lawyers would tell the jury that he never intended to kill anyone that day, even up until the point of the shooting itself. Instead, they explained that due to a lack of personal space, Louis had an autistic meltdown. His autism diminished his responsibility. In other words, he wasn't in a sound frame of mind when he committed the murder. To no surprise, the jury wouldn't accept the defense and Louis was found guilty on all charges. I'm not gonna lie though. Maybe that it seems like that could be because it was a police officer. If that was a regular regular murder, if we're gonna call it that, it seems like you would be able to get off on that. The jury wouldn't accept the defense, and Louis was found guilty on all charges placed against him. He was handed a life sentence on a life order tariff, meaning he'll never be released from jail. Oh, damn. Louis de Zoyser at 1.26 in the morning. Uh, I'm not going to lie, man. The judges in uh, the UK, man, they look silly, man. Uh, what is this? It looks like he's dressed up like Santa or something, man. Morning on the 25th of September 2020, you shot dead Sergeant Matt. Like that wig thing. I don't get it, man. <laughs> I don't get it, man. September 2020, you shot dead Sergeant Matt Ratner. He was the custody sergeant at Croydon Police Station. He had devoted his life to public service. He put himself in the way of danger to protect the public and to protect and safeguard those who came into custody. You have robbed Sue Bushby of their future life together, Diane Peachy of her stepson, Luke Ratner of his father, and Jessica Williams and James Young of their brother. They are all rightly immensely proud of the man you killed. They recognize that you bear the sole responsibility for his murder. They say in their victim impact statements that for the officers. I didn't know there was a thing like that. Victim impact statement. So it's like a brother, mother, whatever, speaking on the impact. Of their death, I guess. I didn't know that. They say in their victim impact statements that for the officers who were on duty that night, they have nothing but support, sympathy, admiration, and respect. You say. Yeah, I don't know if I would say that if I was them, man. Support, sympathy, admiration, and respect. You said that you had an autistic meltdown. You said that you had diminished responsibility. The jury disagreed. The jury found you guilty of murder. The sentence for murder is... Yeah, but that's what I'm saying, man. I don't know how the jury stuff works in the UK, but... I'm guessing it's similar to like the US, like that they all have to agree or whatever it is. It's like, I don't know if it's majority or if it is that all of them have to agree, but like if this wasn't a police officer, would it have been the same? I don't know, man. Of murder. The sentence for murder is set by law. It is life imprisonment. So I sentence you to life imprisonment. I have a great deal of medical evidence about your condition, and I have been given very great assistance from your lawyers. I have all the information that is necessary to pass sentence. The law requires the court to decide whether to set a minimum term order or a whole life order. A minimum term order 
means that you can be considered for release after the minimum term. A whole life order means that you remain in custody for the rest of your life. I didn't even know they had that in the UK, to be honest, man. I didn't know you could get sent to, like, life without a chance of getting out. The aggravating factors, in my judgment, outweigh the mitigating factors. The aggravating effect of your use of a gun and the planning and premeditation outweigh the mitigating effects of your person. Was there really planning and... The aggravating effect of your use of a gun and the planning and premeditation... Was there really planning and premeditation though? I'm not sure. ...outweigh the mitigating effects of your personal mitigation, including the impact of custody. There is therefore no justification to depart from the starting point of a whole life order. That is what Parliament has decided should normally apply as a starting point to the murder of a police officer in the execution of their duty. The seriousness of the offence means that a minimum term order is not justified. A whole life order must be imposed. Louis de Zoyza, so That's just because he was a police officer, I guess. I sentence you to imprisonment for life. I impose a whole life order. That means you will remain in custody for the rest of your life. You may now be taken from the dock. Yeah, that was a mad case, man. But yeah, if I was the family, I would definitely blame the officers that searched him, man. I guess you can only do that for so long before it, yeah, you can't do that forever, I think. But yeah, man, this case was mad. But yeah, let me know what you think in the comments and don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And let me know if you want me to check out more vids like this as well, man. And that's me, man. I'm out. Peace.